is the Shadow Armed Forces Minister, Luke Pollard. Luke, thank you very much for your time. Look, we're Good hearing morning. that you're aiming to increase defence spending to 2.5% of GDP. Why are there sort of caveats in that? It's not a, it's not a cast-iron promise, is it? Well, what Labour's setting out today is to match the ambition of government when it comes to defence spending, getting to 2.5% of GDP when economic conditions allow. But Keir is also in Barrow setting out our commitment to the UK's continual at-sea nuclear deterrent. That's the submarines that are always at sea, keeping the UK and our allies safe. We're doing that by supporting the construction of four new uh, Dreadnought-class submarines in Barrow, not only supporting the jobs in Cumbria, but also the supply chain, the thousands and thousands of people that work in the UK supply chain supporting that endeavour, and setting out our commitment that when defence spending is made by the Ministry of Defence, it should go to UK companies first before we look to buy uh, equipment internationally. Mm. So the ambition is 2.5%, but it's not a, a, total, a total promise. And this is a, a significant departure from leadership under Jeremy Corbyn. He said he'd never use nuclear weapons. Uh, I'm assuming then Keir Starmer is saying he would be prepared to use Trident. Yeah, Keir has changed the Labour Party, and that's very clear. Uh, it's really important that when, as a party, we're going into the next general election, we can be trusted not only on economic security, but national security as well. And that is especially important when we are seeing the threats to the United Kingdom rise internationally, where we're seeing growing Russian aggression, not just to our ally in Ukraine, but to our allies in Eastern Europe and to the UK as well. That's why we need to address the hollowing out and underfunding of our armed forces that we've seen over the last 14 years. They're the Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, when he was Defence Secretary, they were his descriptions, his words of what Tory defence policy had done. And so on, after and on concern, I'm sorry, on Labour policy, just to be really clear then, you would be prepared to push the button? I mean, Keir has set that out, our total commitment to the nuclear deterrent, yes. Um, and a deterrent isn't a deterrent if you tell people what you're going to do with it. Clearly. And so that means not going into the full detail of how and when and the what circumstances a deterrent would be used, but Labour's commitment to our nuclear deterrent is total, and I imagine that Keir will be setting that out later today as well. And we look forward to hearing more about it. Um, Luke, I think if you are a, a Labour voter who thought, I didn't think you had this policy on defence or on nuclear, uh, the use of Trident, um, maybe I really cared about green investment, or I'm nervous about your sort of support for, for Israel, is there a risk, actually, that in moving further towards the centre and adopting some Conservative Party policies, you're, you're taking your core vote for granted? Well, Keir's very clear that there is no complacency for any voter group. We need to win votes from people right across the political spectrum who voted Labour and who didn't vote Labour at the last general election. But we also need to have policies that keeps Britain safe. And we could have the best health and education policies in the world but if we are at war, that doesn't mean anything. That's why having a strong defence policy is a bedrock of national security. It's a bedrock of the platform Labour's taking into the next general election. And it also matters because we are seeing growing international tensions. We are seeing uh, greater instability and we're seeing a deliberate uh, tactics and strategies of those nations who oppose not just the UK, but our values in the world. Now, we need to deter and it's, that... it's really whether that your core voters sort of believe that message, I guess. We are really short for time, but I just want to ask you the questions over your colleague, Angela Rayner, and her tax affairs. For some reason, we're all still talking about it. Do you regret that there wasn't clarity provided and it, it hasn't yet? Uh, on a day where we're talking about securing the national security of our country, uh, I don't see many people actually genuinely talking about Angela Rayner's tax affairs. Keir's set out clearly uh, his support for Angela Rayner. Angela's answered the questions involved. But when it comes to high waiting lists, when it comes to uh, an economic recession, when it comes to growing threats to our national security, they're the areas that I want our politicians focusing on and not the tittle-tattle of what happened 10 years ago with Angela's ex-husband. And that is the desperate attempt of the Labour Party, and yet those questions still keep coming. Luke Pollard, it's thank also, you. It's also my actual position. I, don't, I think there are bigger issues at stake here. And when it comes to, genuinely, we have Russian aggression towards our allies, we have daily threats, daily cyber Minister, attacks... Minister, I'm so sorry, Shadow here. Armed Forces That's Minister, just the time. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Luke Pollard, thank you very much. Shadow Armed Forces Minister, and when Keir Starmer makes that announcement later, we will be following it for you here. We'll